In the maintenance of file systems, defragmentation is a process that reduces the amount of fragmentation. It does this by physically organizing the contents of the mass storage device used to store files into the smallest number of contiguous regions. It also attempts to create larger regions of free space using compaction to impede the return of fragmentation. Some defragmentation utilities try to keep smaller files within a single directory together, as they are often accessed in sequence. Defragmentation is advantageous and relevant to file systems on electromechanical disk drives. The movement of the hard drive's read-write heads over different areas of the disk when accessing fragmented files is slower, compared to accessing the entire contents of a non-fragmented file sequentially without moving the read-write heads to seek other fragments. Causes of fragmentation Fragmentation occurs when the file system cannot or will not allocate enough contiguous space to store a complete file as a unit, but instead puts parts of it in gaps between other files. Larger files and greater numbers of files also contribute to fragmentation and consequent performance loss. Defragmentation attempts to alleviate these problems. Example Consider the following scenario, as shown by the image on the right. An otherwise blank disk has five files, A through E, each using ten blocks of space. On a blank disk, all of these files would be allocated one after the other. If file B were to be deleted, there would be two options, mark the space for file B as empty to be used again later, or move all the files after B so that the empty space is at the end. Since moving the files could be time-consuming if there were many files which need to be moved, Usually the empty space is simply left there, marked in a table is available for new files. When a new file, F, is allocated requiring six blocks of space, it could be placed into the first six blocks of the space that formerly held file B, and the four blocks following it will remain available. If another new file, G, is added and needs only four blocks, it could then occupy the space after F and before C. However, if file F needs to be expanded, there are three options, since the space immediately following it is no longer available, move the file F to where it can be created as one contiguous file of the new, larger size. This would not be possible if the file is larger than the largest contiguous space available. The file could also be so large that the operation would take an undesirably long period of time. Move all the files after F until one opens enough space to make it contiguous again. Same problem as in the previous example, if there are a small number of files or not much data to move, it's not a big problem. If there are thousands, or tens of thousands, there isn't enough time to move all those files. Add a new block somewhere else, and indicate that F is a second extent. Repeat this hundreds of times and the file system will have a number of small free segments scattered in many places, and some files will have multiple extents. When a file has many extents like this, access time for that file may become excessively long because of all the random seeking the disk will have to do when reading it. Additionally, the concept of a Euro OE fragmentation a Euro is not only limited to individual files that have multiple extents on the disk. For instance, a group of files normally read in a particular sequence can be considered fragmented if they are not in sequential load order on the disk, even if these individual files are not fragmented. The read-write heads will have to seek these files randomly to access them in sequence. Some groups of files may have been originally installed in the correct sequence, but drift apart with time as certain files within the group are deleted. Updates are a common cause of this, because in order to update a file, most updaters usually delete the old file first, and then write a new, updated one in its place. However, most file systems do not write the new file in the same physical place on the disk. This allows unrelated files to fill in the empty spaces left behind. In Windows, a good defragmenter will read the prefetch files to identify as many of these file groups as possible and place the files within them in access sequence. Another frequently good assumption is that files in any given folder are related to each other and might be accessed together. To defragment a disk, defragmentation software can only move files around within the free space available. This is an intensive operation and cannot be performed on a file system with little or no free space. During defragmentation, 
system performance will be degraded, and it is best to leave the computer alone during the process so that the defragmenter does not get confused by unexpected changes to the file system. Depending on the algorithm used it may or may not be advantageous to perform multiple passes. The reorganization involved in defragmentation does not change logical location of the files. Common countermeasures, partitioning, a common strategy to optimize defragmentation and to reduce the impact of fragmentation is to partition the hard disk, S, in a way that separates partitions of the file system that experience many more reads than writes from the more volatile zones where files are created and deleted frequently. The directories that contain the user's profiles are modified constantly. If files from user profiles are held on a dedicated partition, the defragmenter runs better since it does not need to deal with all the static files from other directories. For partitions with relatively little write activity, defragmentation time greatly improves after the first defragmentation, since the defragmenter will need to defragment only a small number of new files in the future. Offline defragmentation, the presence of immovable system files, especially a swap file, can impede defragmentation. These files can be safely moved when the operating system is not in use. For example, NTFS RESIZE moves these files to resize an NTFS partition. The tool page defrag could defragment Windows system files such as the swap file and the files that store the Windows registry by running at boot time before the GUI is loaded. Since Windows Vista, a feature is not fully supported and has not been updated. In NTFS, as files are added to the disk, the master file table must grow to store the information for the new files. Every time the MFT cannot be extended due to some file being in the way, the MFT will gain a fragment. In early versions of Windows, it could not be safely defragmented while the partition was mounted, and so Microsoft wrote a hard block in the defragmenting API. However, since Windows XP, an increasing number of defragmenters are now able to defragment the MFT, because the Windows defragmentation API has been improved and now supports that move operation. Even with the improvements, the first four clusters of the MFT remain unmovable by the Windows defragmentation API, resulting in the fact that some defragmenters will store the MFT in two fragments, the first four clusters wherever they were placed when the disk was formatted, and then the rest of the MFT at the beginning of the disk. User and performance issues, in a wide range of modern multi-user operating systems, an ordinary user cannot defragment the system disk since super-user access is required to move system files. Additionally, file systems such as NTFS are designed to decrease the likelihood of fragmentation. Improvements in modern hard drives such as RAM cache, faster platter rotation speed, command queuing, and greater data density reduce the negative impact of fragmentation on system performance to some degree though increases in commonly used data quantities offset those benefits. However, modern systems profit enormously from the huge disk capacities currently available, since partially filled disks fragment much less than full disks, and on a high-capacity HDD, the same partition occupies a smaller range of cylinders, resulting in faster seeks. However, the average access time can never be lower than a half rotation of the platters, and platter rotation is the speed characteristic of HDDs which has experienced the slowest growth over the decades, so minimizing the number of seeks remains beneficial in most storage-heavy applications. Defragmentation is just that, ensuring that there is at most one seek per file, counting only the seeks to non-adjacent tracks. When reading data from a conventional electromechanical hard disk drive, the disk controller must first position the head, relatively slowly, to the track where a given fragment resides, and then wait while the disk platter rotates until the fragment reaches the head. Since disks based on flash memory have no moving parts, random access of a fragment does not suffer this delay, making defragmentation to optimize access speed unnecessary. Furthermore, since flash memory can be written to only a limited number of times before it fails, defragmentation is actually detrimental. Windows system restore points may be deleted during defragmenting optimizing, running most defragmenters and optimizers can cause the Microsoft Shadow Copy service to delete some of the oldest restore points, 
even if the defragmenters optimizers are built on Windows API. This is due to shadow copy keeping track of some movements of big files performed by the defragmenters optimizers. When the total disk space used by shadow copies would exceed a specified threshold, older restore points are deleted until the limit is not exceeded. Defragmenting and optimizing, besides defragmenting program files, the defragmenting tool can also reduce the time it takes to load programs and open files. For example, the Windows 9X defragmenter included the Intel application launch accelerator which optimized programs on the disk by placing the defragmented program files and their dependencies next to each other, in the order of which the program loads them, to load these programs faster. At the beginning of the hard drive, the outer tracks have a higher transfer rate than the inner tracks. Placing frequently accessed files onto the outer tracks increases performance. Third-party defragmenters, such as MyDefrag, will move frequently accessed files onto the outer tracks and defragment these files. Approach and defragmenters by file system type, BAT, MS-DOS 6X and Windows 9X systems come with a defragmentation utility called Defrag. The DOS version is a limited version of Norton SpeedDisk. The version that came with Windows 9X was licensed from Symanth Corporation and the version that came with Windows 2000 and XP is licensed from Conducive Technologies. NTFS was introduced with Windows NT 3.1, but the NTFS file system driver did not include any defragmentation capabilities. In Windows NT 4.0, defragmenting APIs were introduced that third-party tools could use to perform defragmentation tasks. However, no defragmentation software was included. In Windows 2000, Windows XP and Windows Server 2003, Microsoft included a defragmentation tool based on DiskKeeper that made use of the defragmentation APIs and was a snap-in for computer management. In Windows Vista, Windows 7 and Windows 8, the tool has been greatly improved and was given a new interface with no visual disk map and is no longer part of computer management. There are also a number of free and commercial third-party defragmentation products available for Microsoft Windows. BSD UFS and particularly FreeBSD uses an internal relocator that seeks to reduce fragmentation right in the moment when the information is written to disk. This effectively controls system degradation after extended use. Linux X2, X3, and X4, much like UFS, these file systems employ allocation techniques designed to keep fragmentation under control at all times. As a result, defragmentation is not needed in the vast majority of cases. X2 uses an offline defragmenter called E2Defrag, which does not work with its successor X3. However, other programs, or file system independent ones, may be used to defragment an X3 file system. X4 is somewhat backward compatible with X3, and thus has generally the same amount of support from defragmentation programs. In practice there are no stable and well-integrated defragmentation solutions for Linux, and thus no defragmentation is performed. Nowadays E4 defrag can be used to defragment an X4 file system. VXFS is the FSADM utility that includes defrag operations. JFS is the DRAGFS utility on IBM operating systems. HFS Plus introduced in 1998 a number of optimizations to the allocation algorithms in an attempt to defragment files while they are being accessed without a separate defragmenter. WAFL in NetAPP's ONTAP 7.2 operating system has a command called reallocate that is designed to defragment large files. XFS provides an online defragmentation utility called XFSFSR. SFS processes the defragmentation feature in almost completely stateless way, so defragmentation can be stopped and started instantly. ADFS, the file system used by RISC OS and earlier Acorn computers, keeps file fragmentation under control without requiring manual defragmentation. See also Comparison of defragmentation software, fragmentation, file system fragmentation, list of defragmentation software, virtual disk image, we're leveling, a similar technique for prolonging flash memory content, references. 
Sources, Norton, Peter Peter Norton's Complete Guide to DOS 6.22, page 521 Euro Sams, Woody Lenhardt, Justin Lenhardt Windows XP Time Saving Techniques for Dummies, Second Edition page 456 Euro for Dummies. Jensen, Craig. Fragmentation, The Condition, The Cause, The Cure. Executive Software International. Dave Kleiman, Laura Hunter, Marish Satya Narayana, Kaimon Androa, Nancy G. Altholtz, Lawrence Abrams, Darren Windham, Tony Bradley and Brian Barber Internals, Defragmentation, Recovery, and Administration Field Guide a Euro Singress, Rob, Drew Server Disk Management in a Windows Environment Chapter 7 a Euro Albach, External Links, Microsoft Windows XP Defragmentation, How to Schedule a Weekly Defragmentation. Microsoft Windows 2000 Professional and Server Defragmentation, How to Schedule Defragmentation, SST Hard Disk Optimizer, How Linux Avoids Making Files Fragmented, How Defragmentation Was Changed for Windows 7, Complete List of Defragmentation Utilities for Windows.